Good morning, folks watching plasma filaments dance on the northwestern limb of our star. We've got major science news to hit today, but we're starting with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com. And it starts slowly. The coronal holes are the only features of note on the disk. No active regions, and the solar wind climbed back up a bit out of that anemically quiet range it had been in for a few days. Still nothing major, just back to that middle range solar wind, and the geomagnetic conditions are pretty calm as well. Two quakes of note yesterday, one in the mountainous region of Southern California, and the other striking Japan. And this takes us to our first science story of the day, water and blood echoes. Not only have 100% of blood echoes ever struck the cold slabs of crust diving below, but the more water there is in the crust, the more earthquakes it will take as it dives down. They believe this can help them predict earthquakes and, uh, yeah, since the water amplifies the current effect, that's been our thinking for quite a while. It's the number one way people are already predicting earthquakes over at QuakeWatch.net, so I guess I'll have to agree with the scientists on this one. Quick note on solar neutrinos. This is one of the hardest aspects of astrophysics for electric and plasma enthusiasts to understand. There is a central modulation point at the center of stars and even many planets. The plasma core concept matches observations very well, and it explains the nuclear fusion in the core evidence they claim to have, because the activity at that modulation point is absolutely nuclear. Quick stop at Gemini to find numerous dust rings around young stars. Also finding that there's no real rule for dusk disk shape and planet formation. They seem to form at all of them. One exoplanet in particular is making big news today about 32 light years away, part of a local stellar neighborhood in the galaxy. It's got a planet that's just a shade larger than Neptune. But even if you could take the gravity and breathe whatever air is there, you wouldn't want to. Its red dwarf star is a flare star, and it's pounding the super planet with X-rays and stellar wind. Now, sticking with Neptune-like exoplanets, the most interesting discovery in that world came in the recognition that their atmospheres can produce diamond rain. While no more hospitable to life than our previously examined exoplanet, I think I could make an exception for this one. Before cosmology and our top Earth story, I want to mention that if you registered for the now-canceled Observing the Frontier 2020 conference, you can help us expedite your refund. Link below the video to our expedite page at observatoryproject.com, and we very much appreciate your patience. Couple Dr. R is up next, and someone get Dr. Robinson here a cookie. Indeed, the tritium explanation for the Xenon 1T results is the best one, as you've been hearing here for a few days. 10 points for this paper and big embarrassment points for the scientists who began running away with brand new dark matter hypotheses when it was first reported. Next Dr. R is Dr. Robitaille, delivered another push for the cosmic microwave background to walk the plank. Plank data is not data, and any one of the items he's demonstrated in this or his last few videos debunks an incredible amount of mainstream science. That's on Sky Scholar Channel. Up next, folks, Quasars, the supermassive galactic monsters in the, quote, early universe, and we're getting a confirmation of the great cosmic timeline problem. This mega monster appearing at what they think was 700 million years after the Big Bang just makes no sense. It could not have formed in this amount of time. And this and others have created the cosmic timeline problem, which you can learn more about in our Plasma Cosmology movie, linked below these videos almost every day and on our channel page. And the top story brings pieces of heaven to Earth, cosmic rays, from our galaxy and others, a critical aspect of climate, atmospheric electricity, and even silica-rich magma viscosity. We can report this morning that, at some point earlier this year, Roger Pyle finally updated his neutron monitor and sunspot chart after about a year without touching it. Like all the other charts we've shown in this realm, the most reliable sources, in my opinion, are now painting a clearer picture of the modern cosmic ray maximum. We have well exceeded last cycle and stayed there. That was supposed to be the highest level of cosmic rays in the space age. And we haven't actually seen these levels of cosmic rays at Earth since at least the Dalton minimum on the Sun, and probably the Maunder minimum. Unlike the Maunder period, however, when Earth's magnetic field was about 99%, today, we're down a good ways and heading lower. We greatly appreciate your support. Cosmic ray maximum. Cosmic timeline problems continue. Cosmic microwave background is flatlining. Learn more at our channel page or at suspiciousobservers.org, where all our best videos are free to watch on the homepage. 
We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.